All right. Welcome back to another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk Podcast. This is Championship Weekend. I'm Brad. And I'm Hefe. Man, where I don't even know where to start. You know where I have to start? I hate to be this way. I really hate to be this way. But, dude, the last two weeks, the Cowboys fans have been so ridiculously obnoxious that they have officially turned me. I can't ever root for the Cowboys again, ever. They were so obnoxious. And then last night, I saw a meme today that said uh, it was Forrest Gump face and they put Dak's face on Forrest Gump and said and just like that all the Cowboys fans logged off Facebook <laughs> you know they met a real defense man they met a real defense and uh I don't think Dak's that guy man what, what what do you have 15 turnovers in the last nine games 10 games something like that which was unfortunate because he had just come off maybe the best game he had ever played yeah. You know, and, and to have the performance that he did. And, and like you said, the 49ers defense is for real. But for to real, have them. Yeah, I but, mean, we need to stop. We, I need, I, we need to throw that in there. They are for real, for real. Uh, I can't wait to watch them in Philadelphia this weekend because of the prolific offense and the prolific defense. It's going to be a match made in heaven. Uh, and we'll see. I mean, that, I, Cowboys fans can feel a little bit vindicated if the Eagles don't put up. 20 points on the board, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, yeah, you can't – a lot of people, and for for the right reasons, are talking about the Cowboys and what they were unable to do. Um, but, you know, there was a, a guy right before we started recording this, I was on Twitter, and there was a, a guy, 49ers fan, John Chapman, and talking about how everybody's talking about the Cowboys and nobody wants to talk about the 49ers did. And I don't know if it's because – We've been talking about the 49ers every week and how good they are. Um, and so it just be regurgitating information at this point. But I mean, dude, the 49ers, that whole game, like as somebody that that you know watches defensive football really closely and enjoys a good defensive game, I thought that's what most of that game was. And in the second half, the 49ers just turned it on. Yeah. I mean, I agree with everything you said. It was um, and we've talked about the 49ers for three years on this show that the only thing that have held this, the 49ers back in the Super Bowl the last two years, did they go two years ago? I don't remember. But um, is their injuries. And now that that fi they finally sidestepped that issue to a degree, thank God for the rookie Mr. Irrelevant stepping up to the plate, Mr. Uh, future Tom Brady, Brock Purdy. But what a game. What I, 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 I can't – both, both – championship games this weekend and i know i know you're a bills fan uh, i know you're on that bad bandwagon you're disappointed but you have to agree with me with the way the game went yesterday this afc championship is just almost as exciting as the nfc championship that's what i was talking to some friends last night and we were talking about and i said of all the teams in the nfl this year to make it to the championship game this is one of the few times in my life that I can remember that you really get the four best teams in the NFL, the ones that should be there are the four teams left. And, and I mean, of course, I love the Bills. I would have loved to have seen them win a Super Bowl. But, I mean, you can't deny what Joe Burrow's doing and what the Bengals are doing. Like, it doesn't matter who they play. It doesn't matter about the offensive line anymore. Like, they, they know how to play without an offensive line. So all those guys being hurt doesn't matter. Like, the four that are left are are very exciting. I I, I can't wait. This is going to be uh, an exciting weekend of football coming up. Yeah, I so I, ironically I was I I wasn't talking to any buddies because I live a, a lonely lifestyle. But um, you're it that I get to talk to. Uh, but I was talking to my wife uh, the same thing that this may be the most excited I've been about a championship weekend in a very very long time because. Like you said, I honestly feel like the four best teams are have the last four spots, and that rarely happens. You, I mean, usually you have an underdog, you have an upset that comes along, which I need to talk about the upset. We talked about last week, look, for all the things that we get right, which are a lot of them, we do get things wrong, and I did not have any idea what was going to happen with New York last week. We thought that might be an upset, and I had, I did have a buddy of mine. I, I, I lied. I do have a friend. He lives in Wisconsin. He sent me a text message. He said, a message, and he said, are the Giants just that 
are the Giants worse than we thought or are the Eagles better than we thought? And I said, uh, probably both, but I'm going to err on the side of the Eagles being better than I thought. Uh, they they looked flawless. And I still think the Giants are a good football team and had the ability. Uh, they should have been in the playoffs, right? I, I thought last week they might upset the Eagles. Obviously, there was no way in hell that was going to happen the other day. But <clears throat> I still think they belonged in the playoffs. I just think the Eagles are just that good. They're, yeah, really good. A good reminder of just how good they are. You know, because Jalen Hurts, when he got hurt and they ended up losing a game in there, a game or two in there with Gardner Minshew, you know, there were just – there were doubts that creeped in because the 49ers have won 12 straight at this point. Like, they just keep on rolling. So, the Eagles, it was a good reminder of how good they are. Unfortunately, all the injuries for the Giants feel like it caught up to them, especially with the team that they had just played a couple of weeks ago. And, and I mean, the Eagles – just came out and, and reassured everybody like, yeah, when when we want to dominate, we're going to dominate and we're going to do it in all three phases. And, you know, unfortunately, the Giants just had to be the team that was in their way. Yep. Yeah. Just an incredible weekend from football, man. And I am I am so, so freaking excited. So, all right. Eagles and Niners, who you got? Oh, geez. I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to flip flop on this all week long because. This could go either coming before the games happened this past weekend. I would have said the 49ers. I had the 49ers going to the Super Bowl. But the Eagles, man, they are so good. Like, this is honestly probably the two best teams in the league going up against each other here. And I just, dude, I just think that the 49ers, going back to that defense and how good they are, like, they are for real. Like, talking about the best defense of all time, maybe. I know, you know, everybody's going to bring up the 85 Bears and you can talk about all the statistics you want. Like, the 49ers from start to finish, all season long to the point we're at now, not only have they had the pleasure of staying healthy, and they've sure they've gotten lucky in that regard, um, but being able to stay healthy and being able to play well all year long, I mean – they're just too good. I don't know if the Eagles – they're definitely not scoring 38 on the Niners. I don't know if they're even going to be able to get to 18 in this game. So, go ahead, give me the Niners. And Brock Purdy taking this team Brock to the Super Bowl. Purdy, who is still undefeated. Still undefeated. And um, the difference between the Super Bowl team he's going to lead – to the to the promised land and the one that Jimmy Garoppolo tried to get there is the fact that Brock Purdy is a more accurate quarterback as a rookie than Jimmy Garoppolo was back then. So those deep balls, he can hit them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, all right. So my take on this game is is a lot very similar, but with a, but a little different angle. All right. So the 49ers defense is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I, I, I said last week that I thought the 49ers I, – I, I said two weeks ago I thought the Bills would run this based on emotion. Uh, well, emotion didn't carry them through. Um, the Bengals – I told you last week the Bengals really impressed me even though it was a tight win. Um, and they, they, they did what they had to do yesterday. I was impressed. I was really impressed with them yesterday. I think they're just getting better every game. But the 49ers defense is ridiculous, right? The Eagles offense – is ridiculous what what they did this weekend is just i can't keep using the word ridiculous but i that's all i don't i don't have another way to describe it on the flip side of that the eagles defense is pretty damn good most sacks in nfl history exactly i'm not real sure how the kid's gonna stand up when they start knocking him around pretty good now he's done he's done the thing the amazing thing about brock purdy is I, and I wish I was on the inside listening to all this, right? I, I've heard rumors about about how he respond. He, he takes ownership and he understands. And and uh, they were talking last night that Shanahan said that he'll ask him, what, he'll make a mistake, and he'll be like, "What what were you doing?" And he'll explain it. And then Shanahan's like, "Oh, though that makes sense." I'm, you know, so he's got all the right things going. Sometimes I wonder if he's if he's like a like a like a rookie race car driver that just comes out and and burns everything up, right? He hasn't been in a bad bad enough accident yet to make him think twice about it. Now, I don't know if Brock Purdy's going to respond that way or not because he's seen some pretty good defenses. I mean, Dallas, Dallas put it on him yesterday. I mean, they made him work for everything he had yesterday. So I think the game may come down to if the Eagles can put enough pressure on him 
to get him to thinking about it. And with as young as he is and lack of the lack of experience, he's riding high right now. I mean, he's confident. Um, he feels like he can't be beat. You know, things get iffy. It'd be interesting to see how he reacts. That may be the difference of the game. If it's not, I'm telling you, we're seeing the next Tom Brady. I mean, if, if this kid doesn't, if they bring the heat and he doesn't get rattled this game, uh, this, I, <laughs> we we may be seeing another quarterback that was written off at the combine end up being one of the greatest quarterbacks ever play the game. This kid is, right now is un, unreal. And if his career fizzles out eventually, he'll have a story to tell. We'll be talking about him for a long time. And then that's how I felt watching that game against the Cowboys with him because, it, like you mentioned, in the first half, like they were getting after him. And then that game was close for a long time, only field goals and whatnot. But in the second half, like the command that he took of the offense, Christian McCaffrey didn't have a huge day, but – but when it came time to make the plays, Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, as a rookie, led this team and put the team on his back. Obviously, the defense continuously getting stops and getting turnovers uh, is going to help that situation. But from an offensive standpoint, what he's supposed to be doing, I mean, he couldn't have done a better job. Like, like you were talking about the next Tom Brady. Like, that's what I was thinking watching that second half was like, this is what – you would expect to see from the guys like Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees. Like when it comes time in that second half to turn it on, he just flipped the switch and was a different guy. He looked like a veteran quarterback out there. He does. He really, really does. And I don't, I don't know. At, at first I, I was like, okay, you know, the kid's having a good time. He's, en he's enjoying himself, but bro, we're at seven and oh, I mean, the kid is seven and oh, and and granted, he's got he. I mean, he's got a really good team around him, and 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 hats off to Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers organization. But he's still a twenty three year old Mister Irrelevant. You know, it, it's like one step above me getting behind the center. So, uh, not really, but you get the point. I, I think there's something to this kid right now. Uh, we've seen number one draft picks over and over and over come out and struggle and bounce around and and. Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, and they haven't been able to do what this kid's doing. Of course, they haven't also had the program he's in. So it's it's just going to be fun to watch how this plays out with them. And again, if the, if Brock Purdy wins a Super Bowl, there is a hell of a – there's a quarterback controversy like I have never seen in the 40-some years I've been watching football in San Francisco. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have a chance at this point. I mean, he he needs to find some place else to go or just be happy holding a clipboard because he's yeah, he feels he's, like Jimmy G is going to be a starter somewhere else next year. Yeah. 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 I, 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 he has to know that, you know, I mean, it be, I mean, it comes down to you've got all this money invested in Trey Lance and you've got this kid taking you to the brink of the Super Bowl. If I was Jimmy G, I'd be like, I'll just see myself out. <laughs> <laughs> Go over you know? here, play in Las Vegas. <laughs> that exactly. So, I'm taking the Eagles, but any any of the any four of these teams can win the Super Bowl. Uh, any of them. I I don't think I've ever said that before. Any four of these teams can legitimately win the Super Bowl. So, but I I'm going to take the Eagles. But I think the cl uh, the closer the game, the the van the advantage goes to the 49ers. I think if they can really stifle the Eagles' offense and frustrate them a little bit, contain Hurts. Um, the defense making plays when it when it happens, I think that that'll be their advantage. And because their defense is so good, maybe maybe that's that's exactly what they need. But I'm taking the Eagles, and I'm not putting money on them. Yeah, and, and you know what you were just talking about, like that's how if it's close, it, that's why I'm picking the 49ers because like as good as Jalen Hurts has been this year, like you hear me say all the time at the end of the day, and you, and you believe this too. At the end of the day, as a quarterback, you have to be able to pass the ball. And, and when it comes down to it, like when people talk about that it factor, to Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy has that it factor. When you watch it, you just know that they're never out of the game. And when it's close, that him and this team are going to go down the field and score when they need to. So it's I, – I wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong. You know, I, I've been telling people all year that the Eagles look unbeatable, but I think the 49ers are the probable Super Bowl champions at this point. 
and I would love to know what you think about this game, what you think is going to happen, who you think is going to win. You let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you for the next video.